blessed day, students, praying that you all are in good health, safe and sound in your own home. I am really glad that you still find time to listen to this video lesson, and that is highly appreciated. Anyways, today is another day to learn more about practical research, quantitative research in your case. So, let us start. Let's discuss the non-probability sampling techniques. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to identify what non-probability sampling technique is and its types, detect the type of non-probability sampling technique applied in different scenarios, and examine sample researches depicting non-probability sampling. There is a time when a researcher encounters some hindrances in his or her research where it is not possible to draw random probability sampling due to lack of time or budget. This is where the non-probability sampling can be useful. If probability sampling gives an equal chance of selection to all members of the population, non-probability sampling is a sampling technique that does not give all the samples in the population equal chances of being selected. The selection is of samples is based on the subjective judgment or biased decision of the researchers, according to Faltado et al. 2017. Using non-probability sampling could be less time-consuming and less hassle for the researchers. The downfall of the sampling method is that an unknown part of the entire population is not sampled. This means that the sample may or may not accurately represent the entire population, thus the results of the research study might not be used in generalizations referring to the entire population, according to Explorable.com 2009. As cited in the works of Faltado et al. 2017 and Valera et al. 2019, here are the types of non-probability sampling techniques used in quantitative research. First is the convenience sampling. This is a method of selecting samples that are conveniently available to participate in the researcher's study. This method is also called opportunity sampling or availability sampling. Respondents are chosen simply because they are the most convenient to recruit. Thus, this technique is considered the easiest, the cheapest, and the least time-consuming. Let's take a look at this example of convenient sampling. The researcher set a time and date to conduct a survey in a public area like mall and park to quickly obtain public opinion on an issue about the election of public officials. This is a convenient sampling because those people who are available in the time of the survey got a chance of participating in the study, while those people who are not available at the time of the survey were not given the chance of being selected. Next type of non-probability sampling is the purposive sampling. This is also called judgmental or subjective sampling. In this method, the researchers choose only those respondents that he thinks or they think are suitable to participate in the research study. Here's an example of purposive sampling. The researchers conducted a study on why grade 11 chooses TVL tracks over academic tracks. They found samples by asking first the question, Are you planning to go to the university? Those who would say yes would not be included in the study because the aim of the researchers was to have respondents who would work after graduating from senior high school. The third type is the quota sampling. It is a sampling technique wherein the researcher makes sure of equal or proportionate representation of subjects depending on which trait is considered as the basis of the quota. 
The basis of the quota are usually age, gender, education, race, religion, and socioeconomic status. Here's an example. The researchers decided to use 100 college students in their school as the respondents of their study. They applied quota sampling in selecting the respondents. And they decided to use the year level as the basis of their quota. Since they aimed to have equal representation, they selected 25 first-year students, 25 second-year students, 25 third-year, and 25 fourth-year students. The fourth type of non-probability sampling is the snowball sampling. This is also called chain referral sampling, a sampling technique wherein the researcher looks for a respondent to participate in the study, then asks that respondent to refer another respondent who would also be uh, possible to participate in the study. This is used when the researcher finds it difficult to locate special numbers of a population. An example of snowball sampling is as follows. The researcher conducts a research involving an ethnic group called Mangyans. According to the official record, there are about 8,000 Mangyans in the Philippines. But it is difficult to locate those subjects because some have little contact with the outside world. So once the researcher gets in touch with his first respondents, she would probably ask his or her first respondents for a referral to have another respondent. That process would continue until the researcher has enough numbers for respondents to cover his or her study. That ends our lesson today. Thank you for listening and see you next time.